A couple of days ago Dolby released a new version of the Dolby Atmos renderer. Well, I do have some thoughts, so let's talk about it. But first of all, hello everybody. In case you're new here, my name is Michael Wagner. I teach at the Antoinette Westphal College of Media Arts and Design at Drexel University in Philadelphia. And on this channel, I talk about digital media, game design and spatial audio. And if any of those topics interest you, I invite you to subscribe or join my Discord community. Invert link is in the description below. And since you already added, also please don't forget to press the like button, especially if you get any value out of my videos. It really helps out the channel and makes my videos more visible to other people. Thank you. So so without further ado, let's have a look at the new Dolby Atmos renderer. And the first thing that they're going to notice is that I'm using the Windows version here. So yes, uh, the Dolby Atmos renderer is now available under Windows. However, before you go out and buy it immediately, I need to caution your enthusiasm. The Windows version of the Dolby Atmos renderer is severely limited. The reason for that is uh, in the way it was originally implemented as something that was supposed to be used on a separate machine. It essentially means that you can only use the Windows version of the Dolby Atmos renderer for things like quality control. So what you can do, for example, is you can load in your master files and then kind of check if everything is, is okay. And then you can export it into an MP4, a quality control deliverable. But you cannot really use it as something that uh, you can connect to a digital audio workstation on the same machine. So it's essentially supposed to be used as a standalone version on a separate Windows machine. And it can either be driven by a DAW that sits on a different machine or it can be used as simply for checking and doing some quality control work. So why is that? Well, first of all, we have to remember that before this release of the Dolby Atmos renderer, we actually had two different versions of the Dolby Atmos production environment. One was the Dolby Atmos production suite, and the other one was the Dolby Atmos mastering suite. And these two environments were meant for different target audiences. The production suite was meant to be used by people working on home theater applications, so it was limited to 7.1.4, and there were a couple of other limitations as well. And the mastering suite was, was meant to be used by professionals working on movie productions, so you had a lot more speaker setups, uh, a lot more complex stuff that you could do with it. Uh, but it was not really something that a regular bedroom producer or kind of even a producer for home theater sounds would actually kind of use that often. Now, the Dolby Atmos mastering suite was something that you actually couldn't just purchase. You actually had to go out to a dealer and they had to do some consultation because it didn't really work by itself. You actually had to have some additional hardware to make it work. And the reason for that is because its primary use was in a environment where you had two different computers, where you had one computer that was just responsible for the rendering, and then you had a second computer that was doing all the production stuff. And then you needed some very complex routing in between, where you had to route all the different uh, Adobe Atmos channels and all the things that were going on from one machine to the other. And the Windows version of the Adobe Atmos render was meant to be used on that rendering machine, and therefore it didn't really need to be capable of working with a digital audio workstation on the very same machine. And what you have here is really just a new version of that Windows version of the rendering um, environment in a Dolby Atmos mastering suite. So what Dolby essentially did was they combined the production suite and the mastering suite into one product. And the reason for that is very, very simple because the production suite actually got less and less important. Uh, the reason for that is simply because most digital audio workstations that were meant to be used in Dolby Atmos workflows now already have an internal renderer included. And that internal renderer has pretty much the same capabilities as the Dolby Atmos production suite had. So the Dolby Atmos production suite didn't really have a lot of utility anymore. You didn't really need it, quite frankly. So it makes total sense that they combined those two and created what's now the Dolby Atmos renderer that replaces the Dolby Atmos production suite as well as the Dolby Atmos mastering suite and inherits all the capabilities from both systems. Now, because this is a new product, you actually have to purchase a new license for that. Um, it's an upgrade license, so you cannot simply replace your current version of the Dolby Atmos renderer or of the Dolby Atmos production suite or mastering suite with the Dolby Atmos renderer. You actually have to purchase an upgrade. It's not particularly expensive. It's 50 bucks, so it's actually very reasonable. And, uh, you know, kind of you pay for the upgrade and then you're in. But that means that if you had the Dolby Atmos production suite and you upgrade that to the Dolby Atmos renderer, you now have access to all the capabilities that the Dolby Atmos mastering suite originally had. And one of those capabilities was, once again, the ability to run the Dolby Atmos renderer on a separate machine, and that separate machine can be a Windows machine, and that's why you have the Windows version of the Dolby Atmos renderer. Now, you might be wondering why is the Windows version so different from the Mac version of the Dolby Atmos renderer? And as far as I know, at least that's my understanding, this has 
technical reasons. The uh, Windows kernel has certain limitations in uh, in the way it can handle multi-channel audio between applications within Windows that make it very, very difficult to implement what uh, is very easy to do on a Mac, uh, also on a Windows machine. And that's why certain things that uh, they implemented for the Mac environment um, are difficult or impossible to achieve on the Windows machine. Now, when we're talking about the communication between the digital audio workstation and the Adobe Atmos renderer, we need to remember that there are actually three types of signals or three types of information that need to go from the digital audio workstation to the Adobe Atmos renderer. The first one is an easy one, that's the timecode. So there needs to be a timecode generator in the digital audio workstation that communicates the timecode to the Adobe Atmos renderer. The second one is uh, the uh, digital audio workstation needs to communicate communicate all individual audio channels and there are 128 of those so there are 10 bad channels and then 118 optional uh, object channels and uh, the digital audio workstation needs to route those or there needs to be something that routes the, the these 128 audio channels from the digital audio workstation into the Dolby Atmos renderer now on a Mac this is done through the Dolby uh, audio bridge and uh, this Dolby audio bridge is one of the things that seems to be very very difficult to implement on a Windows at least kind of implement something that is equivalent on the Windows machine. Now, the third thing that we need to communicate from the digital audio workstation to the Dolby Atmos renderer is the positional information of each individual object. And this is done through the uh, Dolby Atmos music panner. And uh, this music panner is also only available for Mac and it's not available for Windows. So there are essentially two things that are missing on the Windows version. The first one is there is no equivalent to the Dolby audio bridge. So there is no solution that can route 128 audio channels from the digital audio workstation on a Windows machine into the Dolby Atmos renderer that lives on the same Windows machine. And the second thing that is missing is the Dolby Atmos music panner. So there's currently also no solution that communicates the positional information of objects from the digital audio workstation into the Dolby Atmos renderer. I've heard people talk about that they're going to wait for Dolby to implement a Windows version of the Dolby Audio Bridge. Now I would Caution your optimism in that respect as well. The Windows version of the Dolby Atmos renderer has existed for quite some time and Dolby has not yet implemented a Windows version of the Dolby Audio Bridge, which, which leads me to believe that this is really difficult and complicated to do. And uh, therefore, um, it might be that they're never going to implement one. However, we don't know. So it can very well be that in a couple of months, Dolby essentially comes out with a Dolby Audio Bridge. It is uh, technically difficult, but it's not completely impossible because we do have solutions that allow multi-channel streaming from one application to another within Windows. My feeling is that's probably more a question of stability. So if you are working in a professional environment and you want to make sure that your producers that are doing high-level productions, um, you actually want to make sure that they have systems that are not crashing on them and that are really, really stable. And at least in the experiments that I did, as, as soon as you go into higher channel counts on Windows, things become a little bit unstable and things like to crash a lot. Now, because the system is now available for everybody and you don't really need to purchase uh, high-end equipment anymore in order to get the mastering suite, um, there is also the possibility that people will find ways to actually hack the system. And I do know that some people have started to look into, can I use things like uh, check routing or uh, Dante routing or other types of routing in order to route the channels from the digital audio workstation into the Dolby Atmos renderer. And there's some limited success in doing that. However, at the moment, the... Uh, main limitation is that uh, there's simply no way to route the positional information of objects from a digital audio workstation into the Dolby Atmos renderer. So be aware that uh, while people are kind of looking into what you can do with that, and I might actually do a couple of videos about those things because some of these attempts are really interesting. It's not really meant for a main kind of consumption. It's not really meant to kind of be a part of a real workflow that uh, you would use in order to produce Dolby Atmos projects. And this means the Windows version, at least in its current iteration, is really only useful for quality control. Uh, so what you can do, for example, is you can load up master files. And I've actually done that here. So I've, I've uh, uploaded a very small master file into the Windows version of the Dolby Atmos renderer. And I can now uh, simply play that and it will just play fine. And it will show me all the positional information here and everything.
And the second thing that you can do is you can go into the export sections and you can export the uh, file as MP4, which is this uh, quality control deliverable that uh, encodes the master file or that encodes Dolby Atmos into Dolby Digital Plus with joint object coding. If you've been following my channel for a while, you know that I did a video a while back where I showed you how to use uh, Amazon Web Services, AWS Media Convert in order to create these quality control deliverables on the Windows machine. Now this video has now become obsolete because you can simply get the Dolby Atmos renderer for Windows and then simply kind of load up your master file and export the quality control deliverable. And that by itself is already pretty useful. I mean, you could ask the question if it's really worth 300 bucks that you need to pay for the Dolby Atmos renderer. But, you know, kind of, I, I think if you are doing uh, Dolby Atmos, if you're trying to get into Dolby Atmos, um, it's it's probably uh, something to consider. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's certainly useful um, in, in one way or the other. Now, with that being said, let's have a look at the capabilities that you gain by upgrading your Dolby Atmos production suite to the new Dolby Atmos renderer. And these, once again, are things that you already had in the Dolby Atmos mastering suite. So if you're coming from the mastering suite, changes are really not that kind of much. Uh, you get a new kind of upgraded user interface, but that's pretty much it. But if you're coming from a production suite, there are two things that you can now do that you couldn't do before. And the first thing is that you can go into the uh, setup uh, room setup uh, um, environment and you can create uh, additional speaker setups. So you're no longer limited to 7.1.4. You can, for example, create a setup for a 9.1.6. Uh, in order to do that, what you would have to do is you would have to simply change or add the speakers that you have. So you can say, say that you have the left wide and the, the right wide speakers and then maybe the six heat speakers that you have in a 9.1.6 setup and then you can go into the monitoring section and you can simply add a layout and let's call that layout uh, 9.1.6 um, and not sure why I have two nines here, 9.1.6. And let's select the, the speakers that you want for the uh, 9.1.6 layout. Essentially, we want to have everything with, with uh, the exception of these four overhead speakers here. And then we simply say accept. And as soon as I accept that, it will now give me the option to uh, monitor my audio in 9.1.6. Um, and that is by itself already pretty cool. Now, the second thing that you can do is you can go into the speaker calibration settings. And in the speaker calibration settings, you can uh, EQ each individual speaker and uh, calibrate your Dolby Atmos speaker environment that way. Now, when I'm going to open that up, I need to mute my, uh, I need to mute everything because otherwise you're going to have a feedback because it's going to take uh, my microphone input and kind of feeding that back to me. So let's just open that up here. And let's just mute it here in order to don't uh, so that I don't have feedback. And that essentially allows you for each individual speaker that you have in your setup, you can now change the EQ and you can uh, fine tune everything in such a way that it sounds perfect. Couple of final thoughts. Well, first of all, I think that the consolidation of the two products, the Dolby Atmos Production Suite and the Dolby Atmos Mastering Suite into one product is something that's really useful. I think it will help uh, in the adoption of Dolby Atmos uh, and uh, it will make uh, kind of certain things more accessible to regular producers that were otherwise really, really difficult to do without kind of a serious investment. Now, my second comment is an answer to a question that, that is going to come in the comment section or in my Discord. Um, can you use the Windows version of the um, Dolby Atmos renderer as an external renderer to, for example, Nuendo, where you have essentially the music panel and the routing, everything included? And the answer to that is no, you can't. I tried that. As soon as you have the Dolby Atmos renderer on the same machine as Nuendo, for example, and you choose uh, an external renderer in Nuendo and you select the, um, the local IP address, uh, Noendo will actually crash. So, so it's it's currently it's not possible. So you can use the uh, Windows version of the Dolby Atmos render at least at the moment, really only for quality control purposes. You can't really use it in order to connect it to a digital audio workstation that sits on the very same machine. And the final comment is that while the Adobe Atmos renderer costs 299 bucks, uh, if you have a Pro Tools subscription, don't forget that uh, as a Pro Tools subscriber, you actually get it cheaper. So you can actually purchase it for 99 bucks, which I think is really reasonable. So if you are on Pro Tools um, and you have a Pro Tools subscription, I think this is actually something well worth purchasing, even if you are on Windows and uh, even if you can only use that for quality control. But for 99 bucks, I think this is really a good purchase. 
But this is really everything I wanted to say today. Thanks again for watching. Once again, if you have any questions or comments, please use the comment section below or join my Discord community. And other than that, see you at the next video.